far too long we've been told what to do what to think how to be no more the old paradigm is crumbling falling all around us burn it all it's my mission to bring you back to your natural state of luxury to lead you to an empowered place with energetic intention. Luxury is a personal, expansive experience, one that's been kept from you, hidden away, a soul experience broken into a million pieces. Luxuriously fierce is for those who know there's more, who desire more, even if you don't know what more is. It's for those who are ready to burn old paradigms to the ground and walk through the flames to the other side. For those who are ready to be bold in their being, fierce in their feminine. Luxuriously Fierce is not just a brand, it's a movement. It's not something I do, it's something I am. Together, we are setting fire to the old and forging a new path a new world, one where openness and truth are the norm, where changing the world begins with healing yourself. If you're here on this earth in this lifetime to light a fire and burn everything you believe to be true to the ground, welcome to my world. Burn it all and watch the ashes fly. Welcome back to the Luxuriously First Podcast. I am so excited to have my friend Christy Lee Serafin here. Christy is a spiritual and intuitive inner retreat guide. She encourages women to step back from their busy lives and leads them on this spiritual inner journey of truth, awareness, and intuition by accessing their point of their imagination and intuitive abilities with a step-by-step process. Christy is one of the most unbelievable, intuitive, psychic people that I know, and she believes that everyone has this ability, and we do. And so working with Christy, and I know this conversation is going to be so magical. She guides women through all of all of that in opening their intuitive gifts, and she actually has a very program centered around this. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the podcast. But first of all, Christy, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I love I love connecting with you. I try to connect with you like every week inside of your Facebook group and the intuitive magic that happens there, which we're also going to talk about a little bit later. But it's so magical to like watch you work. And so I'm really excited to dive into this conversation. But can you start by telling us about you and your journey and how you got to this this place of sharing all of this work and, and, and being so connected to your intuition. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. So thank you for that introduction, Megan. I, I wasn't like the intuitive, like oftentimes you'll hear stories of people being intuitive and it's just like, you know, my grandmother was intuitive and I, you know, it was passed down through the lineage or when I was little, I had like, you know, all the fairies coming to me and talking to me or, you know, I, I, you know, or I was like in the park and I had this spiritual awakening and all of a sudden I was like super intuitive and psychic, right? Well, that was not me <laughs> at all. <laughs> and so, but I mean, I, I would have loved it, but it, it just wasn't, it wasn't my path. And so I remember like trying to like see somebody's aura and like my third eye area, like on my forehead just felt like it was going to explode. There was so much pressure. It was just so exhausting and get headaches. And I was just like, oh, I, I can't even see an aura. Like what is wrong with me? So, so my journey really began with kind of searching, looking what, like, what is my thing? I love the idea of working one-on-one -on -one with people and connecting deeper with people, but I didn't know how, like kind of at the time, you know, 20 something years ago, you know, there was massage or maybe like herbology or something like that, or working with herbs, but I felt like I'd be worn out doing massage on people all the time. And then I wasn't necessarily like your 
backyard garden in the dirt kind of person. And I didn't really love, I don't even still don't really love to cook. So those, that was kind of like out. So I was just constantly on the search. And then one day a friend was just like, Christy, I just, I just, I'm, you know, I'm going to take this class. I'm, I'm doing this new like energy class. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, we went to a counselor, family counselor, and she did this thing called body talk on us. And my husband thinks it's really cool. And he's like, go take the class. So she did. And then she comes back. She's like, I got to do it on you. Got to try it on you. And I was like, all right, all right. Like I'm game for anything. Right. So what seemed like five minutes, but really was like an hour or so later, she does this, she does this work on me and she's like pulling up information and, and telling me things about my life. And I'm just like, how did you know this? Like, oh my gosh, like where did you get this information? And yes, it all makes sense. It was like, she was telling me something I knew at this deep, deep level, but it may not have been in my conscious level, but it was just like, oh my goodness. So I leave her and I go and I go back to the kids in the family and I have four kids, right? I have a baby, I have a toddler, I have, you know, two, you know, four kids under age 10 and we go for a walk and it was like the most peaceful <laughs> afternoon ever. And I was like, what the heck? Like, how, do, how does this happen? Like, you know, like usually it's craziness and it was so lovely. And then the next day it was peaceful. And the next day and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Like, you like rocked my world here by bringing this peace. So the next time she worked on me, I left and I was just like, it was like my file cabinet, like the big messy file cabinet, like the old metal file, you know, files. It was like somebody went through my file cabinet and like organized it all and like decluttered it and put it together like it just felt like I don't know like my systems were clear and I was I was just like whoa this is the coolest thing ever like tell me more so that was called the body talk systems and so I signed up my course wasn't for another I don't know six seven months it was still in the distance and so she sent me a book on energy medicine and I read every you know I read every um word on that page and and it was such a great great book. It really introduced me to this whole world of energy, which I really wasn't aware of before that. And so I started taking body talk courses. Just, I was just thinking back to how magical those times were. Like they just felt like they're like, oh, like I'd found my place. So I was doing that, but there was something missing and it was that intuitive piece, right? Like the people that had that intuitive piece seem to be able to go this that much deeper, that much more in than I was. Like I was, it was a very methodical healing modality, which anybody can access as long as you could get a yes and no, and you'd ask different questions. But if you have that intuition piece, you wouldn't have to ask all the questions, right? You can just like get right to it. And, and I, I wanted that. Like I wanted to be able to access my intuition. So I took another course with the body talk system is called Mindscape. And after a weekend of this course, I, I learned how, like I learned how to access it. But after that, it was practice, right? It's not just, you get it and it's turned on and you walk away and now you're this, like this intuitive psychic being, like it was a whole, it was a whole journey of discovering, but I had clients to work with. So I'd drop into my intuition and I would, you know, it's kind of like bouncing back and forth, like intuition, body talk protocol, intuition you know, healing protocol, intuition. And it was just like, you know, bouncing back and forth, which was fine, but it just took time and things would come through. So maybe like I would see a chameleon and I have somebody on my table and it's just like, well, what does that mean? Like, why is that coming through? So maybe I wouldn't say it exactly or I'd wait till the very end and I'd be like, oh, I saw a chameleon. <laughs> and the person would be like, oh yeah. Okay, well, what does that mean? So, well, they called my dad the chameleon. And then it was a male, this person, if he pulls up his pant leg and he has this chameleon tattooed on his leg, like full knee to ankle. And I was like, oh my gosh, my intuition was right. But I waited. Like, what if I mentioned that when I saw it? And maybe there was like a deeper message. Like maybe his dad wanted to come through. Maybe there was, you know, but I was so afraid to like, you know, be wrong or what are they going to think? Or what does that mean? Or what is it? What do I do with it? And what's the symbolism? And so I really have to start learning how to ask the right questions, which I'm not a questioner really to be in all honesty, <laughs> like, I, you know, like, all right, sure. Keep going. Right. And so I had to learn to really 
talk to the images that I was seeing and the information that I was seeing. Cause sometimes I felt like it was just gunk was clearing. So, you know, is this this gunk that's clearing? Is this something real? Is this something like, I would ask, is this symbolic or is this literal, right? What the information I'm picking up. So then with that, like, okay, what does this mean? What is like, I had to start learning the language of intuition and start learning to speak in metaphors. So another symbolism came through. It was like, it's like the ram's horns that go up and, and like some cars would have them on their like hoods of their car. And so this was coming through. And so I'm telling, I, so I tell my client, I'm like, this is, you know, I see these horns, like, and she's like, like you'd see in Texas. And I'm like, yeah, in Texas. And she's like, oh, I just started working with a personal trainer from Texas. And it was just like, ah, oh, okay. Who would have known? But unless I said it, I would have just been puzzling over it. But now that I know she has a connection here, let's go deeper. Maybe there's something about the personal trainer that she needs to know, or maybe it's good work or, you know, but all those things just take time to kind of develop. And this was a new language for me. Like it was, it was not, like I said, like I had it been seeing these things since I was, you know, in the cradle. So, so it was definitely a long journey of ups and downs. There was moments where I'm like, what am I doing? This is silly. Like, uh, like shutting my door, like I'm, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And then a month later, two months later, somebody be like, Christy, come do this, you know, healing course and, or this crystal course. And I was back in a crystal course and I was on, like, I, I knew what I was doing. And I was like, okay, we're going to have doubts on this journey, but ultimately you wouldn't be here unless you're supposed to be here and you're here and you're tapped in and there's going to be, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, but the more that you do the work, the more you're going to connect. And so the sign went open, sign got, sign got turned on again and back in business. And yeah, I, I continued on my journey. From there, I did work in a psychic shop for a while, a couple of years. But in that time, I kind of realized that oftentimes, and I did healing while I worked there. Some people would come to me for healing. Some would come for psychic information. But I find that most people don't need more psychic information. They generally just need more healing. And and they're, you know, they're trapped in their own blocks and they're repeating the same thing. You know, somebody can come to you for a year and they're still talking about the same conversation or the same situation that they were a year ago. And it's just like, oh, we haven't moved on, right? We haven't got the message to move on. Others use you as a crutch. You know, they may call the store five, six times, you know, are they're calling and they're talking. I could hear them like, oh, Jen for Sarah and Jen for Megan and Jen for Christy. And Jen. like, they're, they're trying to just, you know, get the information like, like, Somebody tell me what to do, but at the same time, they're not even listening. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't my ideal. And so I, I left there and I came back home and I have been at home ever since. And it's this intuitive work, this entrepreneur work. I feel like the big thing is just showing up, right? We got to just keep showing up because in this work, we can so easily be stopped and, and knocked off our course, or we don't believe that we're good enough or intuitive enough or smart enough or whatever the thing is. And so we got to keep showing up. So I feel like that's, that's a good place to start is figuring out, figuring out how to show up every day. And show up for yourself. And I love that you said that. And I think it really speaks to like this, the start of your journey and all of this is that there, there's this belief that if you weren't intuitive as a child or if you weren't connected to that as a child or, you know, mm -hmm. you don't believe that you have this intuitive ability or, you know, it's only for certain people or we know whatever it is. We feel like we can't do that, right? Like, oh, I, you know, I wasn't intuitive as a child. I didn't just know things or I didn't see things or I didn't hear things as a child. So I don't have that. So I can't do it. But it starts with showing up for yourself and believing yeah. that you can and continuing to learn and grow and practice, like you said, because even like I was very intuitive as a child and in intuition is still something that I have to practice, right? I have to continue it. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you are on your intuitive journey or psychic journey, it's 
practice showing up for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Like sometimes we need guidance, right? Sometimes, you know, we don't know where to start. So it's nice to um, have some help to get there. But once you get there, it, you know, as with anything, you're not going to improve it unless you practice it. And so, you know, daily practice is fantastic. You don't have to do a lot. You don't have to spend a ton of time on it, but it's showing up every day. Let's access this. Let's drop in. Let's do, take the steps to get there. And whether it's, you know, five minutes or 30 minutes, you know, creating those new neural pathways really helps to develop that muscle, that skill. And the more and more you do it, the more and more it's going to, it's going to open up. So I think, yeah, it's super important, super, super important in the daily practice. And trust. Like when, when you were, when you were talking about the chameleon that I was thinking about all of the times, like what came through was like all of the times where I thought something or I heard something and I'm, I'm clear on and so I get a lot of like mm -hmm. messages like from that way like I heard something or I saw something or I just like felt like I knew something or dreamt of something dreaming was a big thing when I was a child and then that thing would happen or you know I would hear something and then even just sometimes it's very instant like I'm like oh you know I should really call it this very kind of cliche example but I should really call so and so and then two minutes later they call you right like th those kind of like just trusting that all of those things are you and you know your intuition and we're so like oh what a coincidence like <laughs> no it's not absolutely 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 trust is huge that just reminds me i worked at a store one time and that morning i'm like you know, so-and-so like name popped in. And then not even 10 minutes later, I turn around, she's walking in the door. <laughs> it's just like, of course she's walking in the door. Like, you know, why else did she just pop in my head? No, trust is a huge, huge thing. I just led a six week group, the intuition portal, helping women access their intuition. I want to say that was the biggest, the biggest block was this trust, right? this lack of trust started before they even got to the gate, you know, before they even got to the training, it was just like, there was so much doubt in themselves. And I, I want to say it was more than just doubt in their intuition. It was doubt in life, their surroundings, their like everything. It felt like they were in doubt and not everyone. Right. But it was, you know, that's like one of the biggest hurdles to get through is this trust right? And how do, deep does that go, right? Yes, it could have started, you know, last year or 2020 or, you know, as a childhood, but, you know, that's could also be past life wounds, right? The witch wounds, the sisterhood wounds, the mother wounds, like coming in from a different time that we're still carrying with us. So we really try to go in and do some healing work on that to clear up things within your your past time, past lifetime memories to kind of help you drop anything that's creating that doubt. But, you know, it really starts within you start that trust, like, okay, this is possible. This is totally possible. I can do this because the, the, the doubters keep doubting, like th they'll fight you on it. They're just like, no, 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 no. But it's just like, oh, okay. But what if, what if you could? What if you did believe in yourself? What if this was possible, right? Like you got to give a little bit. And I mean, yeah, the doubters keep doubting, right? And they, and that's why you have to be so steadfast in showing up for yourself and in connecting with yourself and your intuition and in trusting yourself because people will challenge you. People will, you know, say that you're full of shit or, you know, whatever it is. Like, and so being so trusting yourself is, you being able to be like, you know, I see your perspective, but it's not for me. This is yeah. it. And yeah. I think a lot of us, this lack of trust comes from, you know, a lot of it's like past life and generational trauma and that, and that sort of thing. But even in this lifetime, mm -hmm. we're so programmed to look outside of ourselves for answers to stuff that we're so programmed to disconnect from our intuition into like not not trust ourselves we're programmed to you know just follow the leader sort of thing and anytime that we want to 
look deeper within, our ego pops up and starts creating all this resistance like, nope, let's look, let's look to this person, let's look to that person. And so I think connecting with your intuition is not only just like magic, but it's also really healing and, and bringing you yeah. home yeah. to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So like in this course, like, yeah, I'm teaching you to access your intuition, you know, possibly take it to that psychic level, but so much more than that, it's a self-awareness, right? It's what's happening within you, what's happening within your energy system, what's happening within your thoughts, your subconscious, your, you, you know, the, the things that are under the surface. And that right there is, is a huge shift in itself, right? Like. Yes, there is like an external thing that you get to do, but yet when you get to step inside of you and witness some things and, and get some like realizations, it's like, oh, oh, so that's why this is happening. And that's why that's <laughs> happening. Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense, right? Like there's so much understanding that can happen when you drop in and you're speaking like that, that that not trusting anymore. It kind of reminded me of like this embodiment piece and um, how we've kind of stopped trusting our bodies and, and, and that feeling of embodiment. So when I help people access their intuition, like it's not just, oftentimes we just think it's like seeing things, right? Like I get visions, I can see things. Well, you just brought up your really clear audience, right? You can hear information that's, that comes through. One of my biggest sense is, is that my felt feeling, my feeling, you know, like I can embody things, like I can trust my body. I can do a full reading on just how I feel like, and, and I'm usually spot on. You mentioned um, the group every, every week on Facebook, spiritually at sisterhood. And I just, I make up different things that are fun. Like, what if we just tune into this? What if we tune into that? Like, I'm just like looking around my, my healing room and I'm just like, I haven't used that. Like, I want to know more about it. Okay. Let's like bring this into the group. Like, it's, it's just usually just like these, like I'm in the shower and an idea pops in. I'm like, awesome, let's do it. And, and so I, one of the first things is, is I can tune right into their energy. I can feel it in my body. I can feel their heavy. I can, I, I know what's, where it's coming from. I, you know, and then I get little, you know, images and maybe, you know, words coming through and it's just like, you know, it, it starts to unfold, but trusting in your body is a huge piece um to the whole puzzle because if you can't stop and listen and know your truth you know whose truth are you listening to right who are you listening to your parents are you listening to your your partners your you know who is it so it's really important to be able to become still and feel into your body right you have an ache or a pain where where do you feel that ache and pain what, what message does it have for you is it is it yours is it not yours like and, and how does that make you feel? Like you can gain so much insight just from that subtle sense of. I love that. And look, our bodies hold so much wisdom. And my, my word for this year, sort of my energetic intention that I chose for 2022 is stillness. Mm. And that's because the last, the last couple of years, especially I've been focusing on learning about my energy and learning, you know, about my human design and what that means and how I show up for myself. And, you know, there's so many different energetic modalities and and healing modalities. And I spent the majority of last year doing a lot of shadow work and inner child healing and womb work and all of that kind of work. And this year, stillness is what I am craving, you know, and I I sat with that and, you know, I have, I have a whole ritual when you don't, and you don't need to have a whole ritual to do this, right? But just to sit quietly, you know, no music or maybe some light, ambient music, nothing that's like, you know, nothing with words, just sit in the, in the peace and put like literally put your hands on your body, like literally touch your body and just connect, ask yourself questions. Like, and that's, where I started in when I was setting my energetic intentions for this year, but your body holds so much wisdom that we just were so disconnected from. And it 
I love to think about a time where, you know, like our ancestors were so connected to their intuition and their, and their bodies and their inner wisdom and, and all of that. And I love to think about like what it, what it would be like to have, to create that here in this, in this time, in this sort of, I like to call the new world that we're moving into, where we're moving away from, you know, being led and moving into being the leaders of our own life and our own heart. Yeah. 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 You said, you know, your stillness. I love that as your word, because so many, so often we're in the whole busyness. Like we are just, and I wrote down the word busyness and it like business, right? We're all of our own businesses <laughs> yeah. and we're all busy. And it's just like, we're going, 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 and we're trying to get it all done. And we're juggling kids and, and, and spouses and, you know, homes and all this stuff. And we're just so busy. And I see it with myself. Like I'm, I'm not pointing my finger at anybody. Like this is, this is all within me and it's just go, go, go. And it's just like, what, what's the answer? What do I do about this? What do I do about that? Like, I, like I noticed myself, like, and it's like, Christy, you would have the answer if you just stopped and got still and tuned in, right? Like, and, and that's the thing is like, we're, we're, you know, just give me the answer. Just give it to me. Let's go. I got to keep <laughs> moving. So it's really like trying to like pull people out of their, their busyness, of their business and kind of like, okay, let's bring you into stillness, right? Let's, let's relax your body. And these are kind of the steps of my program is let's relax your body. And we have particular things that, you know, certain things we do. And then we quiet our mind and then we open our heart and then we drop into the imagination. And, 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 you know, it's a step-by-step. I do the same thing every time. So it's not like you're like trying to figure out what's different or how to do different, you know, do it differently each time. So it's always the same way in. And then you drop in. And then from there, when you're in this, you know, this alpha state, you're in this relaxed state, this dream state, okay, what is it I need now? Or what is it that the business needs? Or what, it, you know, who do I need to talk to to get this information? Or how do I, you know, do I need to call my business in? Do I need to call in my, my guides? Like, who is it that I'm working with right now to like bring out these, these bits of information that I'm seeking? And, or maybe it's even like you're, you're in, you're dropped into your intuition and maybe it's even, you have to do your yoga, right? And so you go into your, your recreation space and you go do your yoga and it's all in your mind. Your mind is, your, your body doesn't know the difference, right? And it's all in your mind and you're, you're doing your yoga and, and, and the transformation is happening because your body thinks that you're doing the, the yoga. Or maybe it's like you go lay down in your healing room on your healing table all in your imagination and your body is receiving healing, right? This, this may take just five minutes and it's just a rejuvenation, a reconnection with yourself. It's a check-in. Like one of my favorite things to do is like calling my own heart in and seeing what that looks like. And, and like, like there's so much awareness that can happen when you start talking to parts of you, right. And, and your energy and then what healing doesn't need to take place or what do you need to do to create that shift? And then you know, you move out of that state. So there's so much beautiful work and healing and, and awareness that can happen by going into the stillness, right? Whether it's this complete stillness, whether it's, you know, your, your own inner guided journey, whether it's your own, you know, healing practice that, that brings it to you. But we need to like get off of that busyness will cycle on a regular daily schedule. I, I mentioned this to you earlier, but I'm on like day 100, 645 days straight sitting on my yoga mat doing Kundalini yoga. It didn't start with 365 days. Like it started with like, okay, I'm gonna do a 40 day challenge. Let's see. And then 40 turned into 80 and 120 and 160 and you get the picture and we're at 165 days. And, and it's been a wonderful journey so far. Like I've never had a practice. I was never like the regular person to do anything. It was just like, you know, I fly by the seat of my pants, but this is the first time ever in my whole life that I'm like, I have a daily practice and I may fight it. I may resist it. I may like say, I'm going to go do my yoga like a hundred times. And like, my family's like, okay, go, go do it. Like <laughs> you leave us alone and go do your yoga already. Rob. Mom, like just go away. And so I, I give myself like one song. So I get my 
set up all, you know, my mat out and my cushion and then get my speaker, go in and all the stuff. And then I give myself one song to be like restless or maybe I pull a card or maybe I want a journal or maybe I'm like walking around cleaning up in my room or whatever it is. And then when the song is done, it's time to sit down and get started. And for me, it's just like you bring those two hands together, the right hand and the left hand in that prayer position, right? That right brain and the left brain, you're bringing it together into that stillness. And like, that's where we get started. And once I get to that point, I never think like, I wish I wasn't doing this. I wish I was, you know, in there, like cleaning up after my kids. I, you know, it's just like, once those hands come together, like I'm in, right? We're on, we're doing it. And I don't think one day out of that 645 days have I regretted it after I sat down and put the hands together. But it hasn't always been easy. Like, you know, I, I've resisted it up, up until that point. But once I get started, it's one of the best things ever. And I also feel like that's helped me show up every day in my practice and my business because, you know, you you know, as business owners, you can just take off like, you know, I'm on vacation, I'm gone for, you know, two weeks. And then you come back and I need another week and I need another week and then I need another week and we kind of disappear. When you have a practice, a daily practice, you have to show up every single day, every single day, rain or shine, traveling or not, good days, bad days, you got to show up. And so, and so you have to be present. So then you're also present in everything else in your life as well. So I, I found this to be one of my greatest, greatest joys and accomplishments. I love that so much. And that's so many days. I, <laughs> I, I would love to, to do that. But like you said, it didn't start with 365 days and, you know, it started with 40 and then 80. And I think it's so easy to look at other people and see what they're doing and kind of want to jump right in. But, you know, you've got to start with what feels comfortable and go from there. And I love like, what you were saying about busyness and versus stillness. And for me, the stillness part comes from like, there's so much that I want to do this year. And the goals, the things that I've set for myself to do are they're pretty audacious if I do say so myself. They're pretty, they're pretty out there. They're pretty outrageous. But like I feel so much fire around them. And the thing is, like, I don't energetically, right? You know, when you create something, the energy is infused in that creation. And I don't want the energy of busyness to be in the things that I create and in the things that I produce and in the things that I move through this year. Like stillness. I want that to be felt and that, you know, I want that to be felt in the things that I create and I want that to be felt in the conversations that I have with people and in, you know, the meetings that I have with people. And, but that starts with me, right? We can't look to other people to create that for us. And I just love that. I just love that. So I like what you're saying. You're kind of like, yeah, like in what you create, you don't want that busyness to be in there. Like, ha have you ever worked with somebody and they're just like, okay, they come in and, and whether it's in person or whatever, there's like, okay, I'm so busy. Like, all right, I'm here. And they're, they're there, but are they really there? And then it's just like, okay, like, I gotta go. I gotta go to the next thing in the PTO. And, blah, 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 and it's just kind of like, it just leaves you kind of like, okay. And then you feel like it's your chaotic energy. Totally. Like, oh gosh, I'm taking up too much of their time. They're so busy. And yeah, absolutely. I did, I did a massage. I did do massage training a few years back. And so I had to, they wanted you to do like so many hours, like with like the general public, right? That would come in and pay for um, a massage. And so the, one of the owners, like, she's like, okay, do the massage on me. And so I, I did my massage on her and she was just like, so the whole time I felt you're rushed, right? You're trying to get it all done in your hour. Like, she's like, I could feel that. And so she's like, lay down on the table and she gets me on the table and she starts doing the massage. And this is like, oh my gosh, like it was just, it was amazing. And in that, in that hour what however long she did it like it taught me so much like you're gonna get done whatever you need to get done right like I have an hour to do this I don't have to I could rush the hour 
right? Busy, busy, like get through it. Or we could just drop so deeply into it. We know when the hour comes, we're going to be done. It's going to be perfect. Like, you know, I don't have to sit there and race the clock. And so then after she left, I had my first person on the table. And I just remember like, like it was the most helpful thing ever. All of a sudden they're there and like, let's just do this. And I just send so much loving in energy into this person that I was giving the massage on. And I have all the time in the world. Like it, it's, you know, like time is not a factor here. And I think they left and they gave me some huge gigantic tip and it was just like, oh my gosh, it worked. And I think that <laughs> there's something to that. Like just take your time and do it. And I find it now, like even in healing sessions that I may do, like we have an hour for the session. And, you know, that's the intention. I go in and we start it. And it's this magical thing that happens and un unravels in this hour time together. But I'm never checking the clock to see, are we done yet? Are we done that? Are we there? Like, is there more? Are we, it's just like, this is going to like be exactly how it needs to be. Maybe it ends five minutes early. Maybe it goes a couple minutes or over, but usually it's always fits into that time frame. And I've even started to notice like playing with time with like, I'm a, I'm like a few minutes late runner. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, like who wants to be early? Like that's like extra time that I can be doing something else. Right. So I never really want to be early, but you know, when time works and then maybe I'm a minute or two late, we have traffic and all this stuff, but we have, I, I live next to a freeway in Southern California and there's a lot of traffic and we get on the traffic, we get on the freeway for everything. And sometimes you get on the freeway and all of a sudden you're stopped. And so I have to take my kids to school every morning. And so I'm just like, you know, I, I'll, I'll imagine my clock and I'll like, like intuitively like, okay, how do we get there by this time or better? And maybe I'll like push the little button to like freeze time. And then it's just like, okay, angels, we need to get there. And, you know, 10 minutes, which really should take me about 15, 20, like, how are we going to get there in time? And I just, you know, I stop, I stop tracking the minutes on the clock. And we get there and we show up and it's just like, wow, you got five minutes to get to class. Like we did so good. And it's just like this whole slowing down and being in the moment and not, you know, constantly checking the time. And it just everything happens and unravels in this like beautiful way. Like I can't, I couldn't plan it any better. You're speaking my language. <laughs> I love these conversations around time because earlier you were, when you were talking about just, you know, sitting on your mat just for five minutes, you know, especially kind of when you're just starting to get into this five minutes, you know, go into your healing room, sit with yourself in that stillness for five minutes. And I'm sitting here. I was like, five minutes is not enough. I guarantee you, if you start with five minutes, you will need more, not not necessarily need more but crave more once you start mm -hmm. sitting in that stillness and you start really connecting with that and connecting with your energy and with yourself you will always crave more of that and time is such a funny thing i you know i don't believe that time is linear and you know it's it's in those moments where like when you want things to happen really quickly they go really slowly right or when you are so present with yourself like in a massage or I'm thinking like I like I do Reiki and every time that three minute timer goes off I'm like oh my gosh three minutes is over already like when you're so present with yourself and you're just so in the moment and accepting the you know the healing that you're getting from the person doing the Reiki or the massage or you're the one who's practicing you know giving the Reiki or the massage and you're just so in that moment and so focused on how you're showing up for yourself in, in your business in that moment, but also how you're showing up for that other person, right? Time just, it goes away. Mm -hmm. It's non-existent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that in the moment, when you're there, there's, there's nothing else like it. When you're in that zone, when you're in that complete presence, I think that's what I do enjoy about working with one-on-one -on -one clients in that healing capacity is that we're, we're, you know, we're there, I'm there totally present for the client. And then you drop in and you're, and I always look at the priority for healing. What is, what is their priority for healing for their highest and greatest good, right? 
And so it's not just like I'm in the field, just like, oh, we're going to look at that and your left shoulder or the thing that happened with your parent. You know, this is a priority. It's one thing like it's it's the your body is kind of showing me how it wants to heal. Right. In what order? Not just what do I see and we'll do this and we'll do that. Because that's not always the order that the body wants to heal in. Right. It has its own priorities. Right. We got to do this to then for this thing to shift, for that thing to shift, kind of like an orchestra, right? If, you know, one, you know, instrument starts getting out of tune and then somebody else is going to get out of tune. And before you know it, you're going to have this big chaotic mess, right? So what do you do? You start and you begin again. And like, maybe I'm not being on music. I'm not, I don't know much about the, um, <laughs> I'm trying to give you an analogy that I'm not super in tune with, but you know, maybe like the, the clarinets start, right. And then you bring in the flutes and, you know, and, and slowly you start adding more and more musical instruments so that you create this big harmonious symphony. Right. So same thing with the body, right. We just don't go, okay, everybody start, go right. Like everybody turn on, we're just going to redo this. Right. No, we're going to bring this in and that in. And so so then, so then the body can then heal at its, its own, like its own way, its own process. Right. And when you're in there, tune in and you're pull, like your that information is coming through exactly how it should come through. Like I've never seen so much beauty in my life than I have like in a healing session, healing session with somebody. It's just like, you know, I'm like, I can't even make this up. Like, I don't even have that great of imagination for this to come through. And these, you know, and I'm talking to my client, I'm describing it. We're just like, oh my gosh, it's a this. We're crying. Like, but we feel it. They feel it. I feel it, you know, on, on this deeper level, like it's starting to come up. Like it may not be there consciously, but they know it on some level, what's happening as we're moving through this. And it's just like, oh, oh, and it's just such a beautiful experience, but we're, we're there together. Like we're both in it and we're so present. And then they walk out, like they're done and they walk out. They're just like, I've never experienced that kind of peace. And now that I'm saying that I've never really connected the two. That's what happened after my first session. Like there was so much peace and, and like everybody around me was in the same peace. Like how did they were there for the session? Like, how did they get it? But that's it. Like when the clients leave, they're just like, and it just like everything just seemed like it was in order or fell into fell into place but it's not always easy to get there if you're not in this field or if you're not trained right like somebody could just be like yeah it sounds great you know if I do meditation like I think that I'm just never going to come out but oftentimes we have those monkey minds that are just going right have you you know the massage is great but have you ever been in a massage where the whole time you're sitting there talking to yourself is it almost over? Is she going to go on? Like, you you know, you're planning your day. You have your grocery list. Like, oh yeah, that feels good. Why is she spending more time there? Like, why is she, like, I, you know, I'm not immune to this. I, I got a massage on my birthday, which was less than a month ago. And it was this like, oh, that feels good. Are she gonna, is she going to stay there? Or is she going to move on to the next place? Is she gonna, like, <laughs> just enjoy it, right? Self-sabotaging. <laughs> totally. Or I've even in that massage course I took, you know, I had the person on the table that wouldn't stop talking. Like they cannot just enjoy this. Like they have to continuously talk to fill the space. They can't, they're, they're, I, they're unable to get into that stillness. Right. And so what do we do? We just sit there and talk. And I've had them on my, on my table too. Like some people were just like out, they'll completely fall asleep. Some are just like following and some are just like, they can't stop talking because they can't allow themselves to go into that deeper state right and it then you know if they're talking to me then it's hard for me to drop in as well to get there because I'm trying to listen to them and it's just like okay <laughs> okay we're receiving now and so it, it's really interesting how we can all self-sabotage yeah this this inner knowing this inner zone this this stillness this relaxation so it's really can be a challenge to like quiet the mind, quiet the mind. We're so used to being so busy. And I think what comes through for me when you were just saying about like, you know, that person on the massage table, always talking, right. Unable to be in that stillness. It, it's, that's a trauma response for a lot of people mm -hmm. yeah. to not people who have never, you know, felt seen or heard. And so they take the opportunity whenever they can or you know whatever it might be 
but and some making the jokes you know when you're you know, in those moments where stillness and opportunity to be in that stillness and to be present in the moment comes up and your ego steps in and goes whoa we don't know what this is like this is very unsafe so we're not you know we're not gonna we're not gonna mm -hmm. go there and so again coming back to really kind of at its core what you guide people through is that healing and then that transformation and being able to recognize those patterns that come up to help them connect with themselves and with their intuition because again if you're if you're always talking your intuition is not going to have any room to come through absolutely your body's wisdom is just it's not going to mm -hmm. it's probably going to be screaming at you but you're not going to hear it right <laughs> it's always it's always yeah. you're always talking yeah but you've got to be present and in that stillness to to listen to hear yeah which voice is louder right the ego or the intuition and how do you tell them apart then we get into how yeah. do you tell them yeah. apart how do you, <laughs> you know? there's there's yes. so much there's so much here and that's what i love about anything that has to do with energy like anything that has to do with connection and intuition and you know being home in your soul is there's so much there's so much expansion to be had and I think that overwhelms a lot of people especially when they're you know new to all of this but it, it was certainly overwhelming for me in the beginning too but now I relish it and I'm like there's so much I want to learn there's so much I want to do and you know when I recognize a pattern you know my ego popping up I almost get excited I was having this conversation with someone earlier when I feel my intuition or my ego, you know, interrupting my intuition and interrupting that pull, I feel, yeah, almost excited. Like, oh, there's my ego. What is it going to try to tell me today? What patterns is it going to bring up for me to move through, for me to acknowledge, for me to say like, hey, ego, hey, pattern, like, I see you. You're not going to stop me. Like, welcome to the party, but you're not the host, you know? Yeah, that's wonderful self-awareness. <laughs> And it's a practice. It, that's a <laughs> yeah, for sure. A deep practice. A very. It takes a lot of linear time to do that. But yeah, it's really, it's really lovely. It's it's powerful, right? It's to see it for what it is, and to be able to stop it in that moment and go, okay, what what's going on here, right? And how do I kind of move away from the ego? Like, and I I in it right now as well with you and just like why why are you going on and on like why why are you doing this like the fights that you get into like in your head with other people or other situations right it's just like are we there again like can we not just like move on already like I think there was a Facebook post where like somebody said your brother tells you a funny joke and you cracked up right and then your brother tells you the same funny joke and you're like uh you laugh again and then he tells you the same funny <laughs> joke and you're just like okay and tells you the same funny joke over again and you're just like okay you you've told me the same joke over and over and over like it's not funny anymore right like you know like it's funny but I'm over yet we do that all the time with you know, those stories in our mind, right? Like we retell the story over and over and over and over. Like, don't you get bored with it? <laughs> like, is it time to let it go and move on? Like, why do we keep rehashing it and rehashing it and and then even changing the story or creating a whole new story, like to make it that much more? And it just it's it's that the kind of the drama, right? It's that that you know, it gets everything moving. We get kind of excited with it. And it's just like, <sighs> but if you're in a space of like true love of self, we wouldn't be going there, right? We wouldn't be telling those stories over and over to ourselves and trying to make ourselves upset and trying to make the other person look like a bad person and all, all those things. Like that's not self-love, right? That's like getting in a fight in your head. Like, you know, so how is that good right no fighting is is often not considered good but yet we do it to ourselves all the time so i started to really do i think it's oh meta the meta i don't know if it's meta method or something it's meta it's where you you start thinking of maybe another person 
somebody that you like and you just see them like really enjoying themselves, right? Whatever it is, just imagine them just so happy and so just really just in love with their life, right? And then you go to a person that yet you really don't like and you imagine them super happy, super just, just imagine them in their, just their greatest happiness, right? Then you go to somebody that you're, you know, having some really big challenges with, and then you see them in their full happiness, right? And then you'll, you know, you look at maybe your spouse and you see them and then you do it for yourself. And it's like, that's like my latest practice when I start going into like that, that fight, the internal argument, the, the story, I start, okay, well, let's change the story. If I'm going to be making this stuff in my head, let's kind of go into them just being so happy, right? And just changing the script. Not going to do that story. I'm going to give them like the best story ever. And there's something that changes in your whole energy system. That's just like, by imagining people that you're not happy with in the best scenario, like it just shifts everything. And it's kind of a beautiful experience. So it's just like, okay, they're so happy. They have the relationship they want. They, things are going great. Things are going good. They're successful, whatever it is. And it's just like, oh, it just brings so much joy to your own system. Well, and I love that because like we spend so much time in this negativity and this negative headspace where we make up conversations in our head with yeah. people, like yeah. conversations that never even happen. We make up these <laughs> arguments and then we get ourselves like all worked up or something that hasn't even happened right like over literally the big stuff yes. and you can do that with anger and fear and all the like hostility and the negativity then you can do it with love and compassion mm -hmm. and joy and empathy right like mm -hmm. yeah which one are you story choosing? you know with yeah that, what are you choosing to invite into your life and it's super powerful when you flip it and it, it's and it's it, I, I feel like it's easier than you think, right? Because, you know, you just like, I wouldn't want to do that. But then it's just like, try it. Try seeing them in this just beautiful state, right? It benefits all of you, right? Them in a higher vibration benefits you as well. So you, you start visualizing that and it's just like, wow, this is really kind of powerful. I love this. So I've been changing the script, seeing, seeing everybody, everything, and just, such you know a great place and it's just like hmm. all right this is my new story love yeah. that yeah now i want to change the script a little bit okay Dude. let's talk about feng shui because i know this is something okay. that you're dabbling in a little bit in a little bit of a battle with your ego and where it's gonna fit That's into cool. all that you do but i love the topic of feng shui so yeah first of all what is it for anybody who's listening and is like i have no idea what feng shui is or what it you know what it does how does it help me sort of thing it's really creating like happiness in your environment it's creating flow chi flow energy flow right same thing in our body it's it's you know we have it in our home too our homes are a reflection of our internal state and and vice versa and so it's creating a balance, it's creating a flow, it's bringing in the elements into our environment, into our home. So we have the five elements of water and wood, fire, earth, metal, they go in a cycle, right? And so sometimes we have these man-made homes that kind of throw us out of the natural cycle. And so we have to bring in these different elements to create a balance, right? And so there's so many different layers and schools of feng shui. Some go back, you know, hundreds of, you know, thousands and thousands of years. Others are newer, you know, more the, the, you know, when the West came into play. So it's really a layering. And then there is the whole like tradition or information of it has changed, you know, depending who had the power, whose hands were, whose hands was it it in like was it in you know which which emperor how was it passed down do they you know they came in and we don't want anybody sharing the information so let's kill everybody with that knowledge and so it's really kind of a mystical study as well it's an intuitive it is a scientific it is all these different things into into the study of movement of energy within a home 
And I began studying it about 10 years ago. And I, I felt like I had to make a choice between, you know, the, the healing of a person or the healing of the home. And I chose the person and, you know, I still kept it in the background. You know, I, I used it in my own home, but I didn't really step out with it to help too many people with it. And then in the last year, the last year, things started happening. Situations, relationships, different little things where I was just like, huh, what's going on? What, what's happening? Like there's something in my environment. And I'm like, okay, the feng shui. Well, I realized I had left, let my, my remedies kind of lapse in the last couple of years. I was kind of like, they're fine. I'm, I'm going to leave it. Well, what I didn't realize was that I'd been in a health people lock all year. So my relationships have been a lot harder all year and my relationships, you know, my family's relationships have been harder all year. And so all of a sudden I was like, ah, oh my gosh, Christy, how did I let this happen? And so I, I started kind of like, okay, what do I need to do? And I just started getting back into the study of it. And there's a part of me that just loves it so much. Like I get it at some deep level. And then there's that part of me that's just like, I want to yes or no. I want to right or wrong. This is how you do it. This is how you, this is not. And I can't get that. So it's allowing myself to have, allowing myself to realize that there's going to be ebbs and flows, like with everything else with feng shui. And, you know, I have the basic principles down and, and then there's the different layers. So we'll just keep working on the layers. And so, so the different layers, there is classical feng shui, which is like the astrology of a house, right? What year was the house built in? Which direction does it face? Where, you know, what is the sitting direction? What is the facing? So the sitting is like, it's like an armchair, right? The back of an armchair would be like the sitting. And then the front of the armchair would be the facing. So that doesn't always correspond with the front or the back of the house. Like oftentimes you think facing front of house, but sometimes people's backyards really have this beautiful open view view and then kind of like the front of the house is more of like the closed off space like that protective back of armchair space and so and so you take this reading you learn the direction you run these numbers there's feminine and negative numbers there are some numbers that are, are very positive and there's some numbers that are very negative and so you what we say we run the numbers and you see in every area of the house where are the good numbers? Where are the not so good numbers? So these numbers that are not good, not positive, you have to remedy them with the Chinese five elements. So there is two earth numbers. One of them will be switching in the next period nine, which starts in two years. But these numbers are two and five. They're earth numbers. This five number is an inherently bad number. It's in a bad phase. The two is not that great, but it's going to be better soon. And so what you would do is if you have this bad earth, what you're going to do is you're going to add metal to your house to kind of um, deplete the earth, right? Oftentimes people will put fire. They'll put like red pillows or they'll paint a wool red or they'll put a red couch in somewhere. Well, that red feeds the earth, right? It's feeding these bad numbers. So all of a sudden something may start happening in your life. And you're just like, what is going on? Well, you may have the wrong element in the wrong place. And so in feng shui, flying stars, we'd come in and go, okay, this is what is needed here. You may add wood here. Maybe you add earth here. Maybe you add water. Maybe you have fire. Maybe you add the metal to slow down this, these bad earth numbers. So that would be um, kind of a flying star consult, con consultation. Then there is, you know, then there's the energy properties of a home, right? Like what is going on under a roof, right? What is going on behind that closed door? What is going on behind that closed door can be so much more different than what was going on behind that closed door 80 years ago, right? We have these internets, we have our, you know, we have the world in the palm of our hands and, and we can be looking at stuff that is not even imaginable, you know, a hundred years ago. So, you know, how, what kind of energy imprint is that leaving behind that door right or within the household so there is this layer of like clearing the energy making the space higher brighter vibration that kind of thing my somebody passed away in a home and it was a long you know process and then they were trying to sell the home afterwards 
and they're like, Christy, you like light bright houses. Like, can you, like the comment was that the house felt dark. And so it was like, that was the comment from the real estate agents. So they asked me to come in and, and just space clear it. And now we can do that virtually because that is a thing these days. But I remember, you know, I'm doing laughs I'm having different bells and different chimes and smoke and, and I'm, you're pretty much doing walkthroughs of the house. And I left there and I'm like, oh my gosh, the house, I could visibly see it brighter after that. Like it just felt just more open and more clear. And shortly after they figured out what they were going to do with the house and they're able to then, you know, offload the house. So there's that energy component. There is the land, what's going on with the land around your house, you know, the shape of the land, the shape of the house, that kind of thing. And then there's the really big piece is the clutter right? Clutter is a huge, gigantic issue, problem. Never before in history can you get something so quickly, you know, again, the phone to your home, right? Things will be delivered in less than a day to your home. And we just get more and more and more stuff because it's so easy to get and we're bored. So we buy more stuff and then it comes in and, and it sits there in the boxes and it lines the hallways and, you know, and the, the piles get bigger and bigger. My dad used to call it a PhD, piling it higher and deeper. And so, <laughs> so it's, so that's not, that's not helping anybody. So it is very, very important to have clean space, have, you know, things put away, organized, get rid of stuff, right? And feng shui affects every, every area of your life relationships. The other, the other thing is, and I'll be in it in two years is another one year lock for money. So your house every nine years is going to go into a money lock or it's going to go into a, a relationship health lock. And some houses are in a 20 year lock depending on when they were built. And so like a remedy for that would be running water outside. So we're kind of in this weird limbo state of 2024, the period will be changing. So things will be changing. So at that time, you'd want water in like your north area or the south area of your home. So a pond, if you have a pool, a swimming pool, your house will never go into a lock. So that is good because that water keeps it out. You want running water, not stagnant water. So that's, that's nice to have. But so I'm creating a little like horse trough pond in my backyard right now to kind of help me with this money lock that I'll be in in about a year from now. And this isn't to say like you're not going to be able to make money or anything like that, but it's just like money situations may be a little bit tougher or maybe you pay everything on time and all of a sudden, and if you're in a money lock, all of a sudden you forget to make payments or you pay from the wrong account that doesn't have the money in it. You're overdrawn or people don't pay you when they should pay you. So it's little things like that. But it's really helpful to know when you're in these different kind of energy cycles so that you can kind of put your remedy in to correct it. I love that. I think and it goes so more interesting. Like, it has, <laughs> it, again, like it, there's this energetic component to our lives that we have. I mean, almost nobody has an understanding of this and how deep it is and how much it affects you and the people around you. And we always say things like when you're talking about the clutter you know, cl clutter is kind of a, people probably don't even think of it as feng shui, right? They they think of it as like, oh, I have too much stuff. I'm going to get rid of it because, you know, people kind of like kind of cliche knowledge that everything, I mean, everything does hold energy, but the more physical clutter you have, the more mental clutter you have, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have this a very popular quote to have a love-hate relationship with all of, with a uh, very popular quote. But we always say, you know, our our external environment is a reflection of our internal environment, which is very true, but it also can go the other way, right? Like, the yeah, what came first? The yeah, chicken yeah, or the egg? Exactly. Yeah. Which came, which came <laughs> first? It, it is a very chicken or the egg situation, but it's so it's so fascinating to me, right? Well, and how do things move when mm -hmm. when it's all cluttered and or even you have the wrong furniture, you have the furniture is just big and bulky and it doesn't fit in a space or your stuff is falling apart, right? Your stuff is broken, right? You have a coffee table that's broken and you, you know, have some duct tape around it. Like, how's that affecting <laughs> your life? You got leaking pipes. So your pipes are leaking. What do you think you're, what do you think you're leaking? If you have leaking pipes? Yeah. Money. 
right? Your pipes are leaking, you're, you're, you're losing money, right? So you want to make sure that you have no leaking pipes or anything because you're losing money. You know, if, if you can't open a door because the doorknob doesn't work, right? You know, that's kind of a struggle getting in. Like, like everything kind of is like a metaphor, you know, in, in your actual life. Your bedroom is overcrowded. You're, you, you're single. You're looking for love, right? And your closet is so full of stuff. How is there room for anybody to come into your, your life, right? All your art is of a single person. Well, and yet you're <laughs> single, <laughs> you know, like. I've even heard uh, like a, a nightstand. If you only have one yep. nightstand, like if, you know, if you, you're set up for a single person and as a single yep. person, you're probably set up to be a single person, right? But, yeah. you know. Add the nightstand. Night night yeah. Mm -hmm. Put something else on the other side. Exactly. Balance it out. They have a space, not necessarily that somebody's going to come in and move into your space, but it allows for the energy of somebody else to come in, right? You have room in your life. You have space in your life, right? If there's no space anywhere physically in your environment, then how are you going to draw somebody in? Because there's no space. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. And then how, you know, how does it feel when you walk into your house? Does it feel like this warm hug, this warm embrace? Like you're so excited to come in. Are you just like the clutter, the, the, you know, the house, the mess, the bad energy of, you know, the neighbors or the roommate, right? Like all those things are going to affect you. So <clears throat> what can you do so that you feel good, right? And then you have best directions, best directions to sleep, best, best directions to work, best directions to, you know, to relax, right? So, you know, there's just so many different layers to it and it's a lifetime of study, but at the same time, I've seen like remedies go in and like within like minutes, hours, like things shift as well. We're just like, oh, okay. I remember the first time I put weights, like literally like like 25 pound metal weights, no coverings, no plastic coverings. They have to be <clears throat> open air. So you're not going to put them in a cabinet and shut a door, but you can slide them under things. Like if they have air to breathe. I remember the first time I brought weights into an area, like I had four kids with a 10 year span. So, you know, one to 10 and some of them were, you know, easy and, you know, went with the flow and others didn't, they were just like, that's not how, that's not, that's not in my life plan, you know, get on board. And, and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is going to, you know, we're going to turn everything on its head. And, and so there's a little bit of chaos, a little bit of crazy going on sometimes. And that first time I put the weights in where I was told, all of a sudden it was just like, everybody relax. I was like, Hey, should we go color at the table? And everybody agreed. And everybody just sat there for like an hour or two and like colored and hung out. I was like, what is happening here? Like, what just, we need more weights. <laughs> I was on a mission to find weight. You're robbing tubs <laughs> in the middle of the night. You're looking for all Oh, seriously. <laughs> seriously. I'm like, they just moved out. Is that like a weight on their, like, in their driveway? Like, that thing's coming home with me. Like, oh yeah. I started anywhere I could find weights. I was, and there's specific places for the weights to go. Like, I'm not just like anywhere, but when you have them in the, the right places and you have the right elements in it's just like oh okay like game on so it's it's kind of fun and it gives me that connection to you know so much of my work is that intuitive guidance and intuitive healing so when i do the feng shui work it's just like that grounded external material and it's there is an intuitive um connection to it but yet it's like let me see your chart and let's get some directions and let's run these numbers. And so it has a different element that I, that I love. I love pushing furniture to a new spot. Like That's one of my favorite things. I move my seriously. things around weekly. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter came home one time, like, can't we just leave things in place for a <laughs> day, mom? Like, Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's there's just, there's so much. There's so there many is. Are like unpacking you <laughs> and who you are in this, this 3D world and who you are at your soul, right? And your energy and the things, all of the things that, 
affect your energy. There's a lot. Yeah. It. It's all. It's such a beautiful process. And I like this journey is never ending. And I, it really, it really is. It really is. Ending. <laughs> but it's so, it's so much fun and it's so beautiful and peaceful and powerful and just all the. Right. Thing. Right. And not that you can't get by without, you know, having your house feng shui remedied, but you may have more life experiences that you'll have to work through. Right. Yeah. And, but yet that brings growth and evolution. Right. Having remedies in place and having your environment in that good state of chi and flow, it's going to just help things go a little bit more smoother. You won't have so many little roadblocks along the way. Doesn't mean that, you know, it's any better or worse. It's just one may be a little bit smoother and one you may hit some bumps. But if you hit the bumps, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to grow a lot from hitting those bumps. So, you know, we, we take what we can. We leave the rest. We do the best, you know, we can with what we got. And anytime that we can, you know, collect a little bit of knowledge and take some action on it, we're a better person for it. Exactly. Oh, I love yeah. it. Help. For anyone who is listening and they are ready to dive in, they're ready to work with you. They want to connect with their intuition and heal and just and transform and all the things. How do they find you? Where do they go? What programs do you have? All the things. Sweet. All right. So my website, social media, pretty much is my name, christyleeserafin.com. Instagram is christyleeserafin. Facebook, same thing. I have a group in Facebook. It's called the Spiritually Lit Sisterhood. And I like to show up every week there and tune in energetically, intuitively to whoever wants to come in, come on and receive some guidance. I like to switch it up. Like I don't want to do the same thing every week. So I'm like, what else can we do? Like, I mean, just like a little bit of insight. I'm just like, oh, huh, that's a great idea. Let's see if that works. And so we have fun in there doing those every week. And then I have just put out a course and I, and I would like to run this a few times and it's called the intuition portal. So I'm helping women access their intuition right now. It's a six week course. Uh, we'll see if it grows at all. And so I'm guiding you to learn how to access your intuition, how to use it, how to, you know, one, one foot in intuition, one foot on the ground. And then how do we merge those? How do we merge the left and right brains? We're using all of our senses, our sense of sight, hearing, feeling, knowing we can use taste, we can use smell, right? We're really trying to open up all the senses so that you can access your intuition. And so we do that in the group. And then I'm in the process of creating a membership. So once the group is over, we move you right into the membership so that you're still linked in with it and you're still getting the help and support through drop-ins through intuitive check-ins and group sessions and intuitive talks so that is all coming and yeah I do energy healing work and I'm thinking about adding in some of the feng shui work just because it's there it's it's in my face and it's just like Christy you've ducked out of it so many times let's do this let's do this so you could always um, find more information on my website again at com or come on to Facebook find me friend me send me a message on messenger I am there um, ready to talk and chat with you whenever you're ready yeah I have one one final question for you okay and that is what does luxuriously fierce mean to you? Okay. So I am a feeler. Taking your sweater off for the <laughs> Take your sweater off, you guys. <laughs> All right. So let's feel into that. Luxuriously fierce. What does that feel like? So I'm just going to take a deep breath in. So the first thing, it's it's like I feel like this glowing orb. And it's it's kind of down in my like lower belly area. It's not like I was thinking like it's higher, but it feels like it's just like this, this glowing orb down in like the lower belly reproductive area. And, and it, it wants to come up like a fountain. It wants to just open up and really like give some 
aha awareness, like mental opening, mental space. So it, it feels like it's this rising light of, of insight and awareness, like seriously fierce. And the more that I'm tapped into it, it wants to open up different areas. Like it wants to tap into that heart space. It wants to tap into that intuitive third eye space. So it's really kind of like what is possible here when you sit with this this these words luxuriously like fierce we have the capacity to open our, our intuitive nature our, our alignment and in and in, in, and even it's like it kind of looks like a water element to me right which is money water is money right you live in the mountains it's or you live in the mountains you're connected to heart and people relationships you live by the coast, like that's more money. Not that you can't have love and relationships there, but you know, that's kind of in feng shui. And so I see like this fountain of possible, you know, of money, of water, of possibilities. So it just feels like it's just a open opportunity for more abundance in life. I love that. I love that you just channeled that because I feel like when, when you started and that glowing ball was like lower in the chakras, that's that's where creative space is, right? Like that's where, yeah, yeah. You no, know, but it doesn't stay. Where it's it, it, right. Like that's where we are yeah. up and out and oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So play with it, sit with it, sit in that because it's such a great feeling. If you could actually sit and tune in, your tune in may feel different than mine, mm -hmm. but you know, give it a shot and see what that feels like. Take that daily daily stillness and and <laughs> tap into luxuriously fierce for yourself I love it. oh this was such an amazing conversation i'm so happy that we have to sit down and do this it's been a long time coming yes i'm so excited and thank you so much for being here my pleasure thanks for having me If you loved this episode or know someone who would, share it and show some love. Screenshot the episode in the app, share it to your Instagram stories along with your favorite fierce moment from the episode. And don't forget to tag me at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. You can also subscribe, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast and at Luxuriously Fierce underscore. Thank you for listening to today's episode and don't forget to tune in next week for more things Luxuriously Fierce. The Luxuriously Fierce podcast is sponsored by Goddess Support, an oracular online business management company providing you high-level intentional support so you can be the creative and visionary in your business. Goddess Support goes the distance that traditional business coaching doesn't. Imagine having a turnkey team of goddesses that have your back with everything from strategy to implementation. That's what's possible with Goddess Support. We exist to serve the goddess that is you, and we are honored to help fulfill your big vision. Learn more at goddess.support or find us on Instagram at goddess.support.